it's Al Ferguson with Queer News Tonight, and I'm at the Florida LGBTQ Democratic Caucus, the state convention that's going on in Orlando, and meeting all of the LGBT um, voices in terms of helping talk about what is going to be next for the state of Florida. And of course, uh, the gentleman sitting with me needs no introduction, Carlos Guillermo Smith. This is the first time I've seen you since uh, the it election. It is great to see you, Al. Great it is great you. to see you back here in Orlando for this conference for the Florida LGBTQ plus Democratic Caucus. They just do amazing work, and I'm yeah, glad to be here. Amazing work. Um, well, uh, let me, since it's the first time I've got to see you uh, face to face, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the elephant in the room, your election, uh, heartbreak for our entire LGBTQ community in Florida. 2022 uh, was tough. Yeah, they uh, they they did everything to silence uh, one of our great voices in the in the state house by redistricting you, finding yes, a candidate that. But as never you know, uh, they cannot get rid of me that uh, easily. Uh, we're going to talk about that extensively, <laughs> I assure you. And then, worst of all, they spent an unprecedented amount a of million money. and a half dollars a million and to a half dollars on me. a state house for seat. state house lol it's like oh my goodness <laughs> it, it, it's like raising a uh, hundred thousand dollars for dog catcher uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, it's a boy, lot of money you must have really made a few enemies in the in the governor's mansion well look they see someone like myself uh, a very outspoken critic of the DeSantis administration, obviously a very sharp critic of anti-LGBTQ policies, but also just generally someone who went to Tallahassee to speak truth to power and to hold a majority party that's out of control accountable. accountable. Uh, and we've been effective in um, holding them accountable in that way and in calling them out and in really um, bringing them, calling them to the carpet for their bad policies. And that's why they felt so threatened, uh, but they're not going to get rid of me that easily. Well, and uh, before we, we dive right into those uh, issues, which we're going to, um, let's take a moment in terms of the reaction to you. You know, it's highly unusual. You were so loved. Uh, in the LGBT community, uh, LGBTQ plus community and the allies in Florida because a state house race would not necessarily garner the attention from Pensacola to Key West. Yours did, and, and the sadness of, of your loss, at least you can you can take a victory lap of going, wow, I had some allies and support I'm behind me. I'm very grateful, Al. I'm very grateful for the Florida LGBTQ plus Democratic Caucus. I'm grateful for the thousands of donors from across Florida who dug deep to give to our reelection campaign, people who lived in Orlando, but people who lived, to your point, in, in Key West, in Broward, in Miami, in Tallahassee, Jacksonville, Tampa, everywhere in between, we had such a broad coalition of working class people who just wanted to make sure that issues affecting Floridians, housing affordability, uh, strong public schools, protecting our workers, that these issues were addressed by a champion who knew, who understood their needs. You know, uh, one other thing that I want to, before we dive into the what's next, and want you to get your mic just a little closer to you, make <laughs> sure we hear every word. Um, we're, we're just passing um, the one year of uh, Don't Say Gay uh, That's right. introduction. Mm -hmm. And um, in the year, basically, uh, one of the most hateful things that's happened from it is it's been uh, mimeographed. That's an old baby boomer phrase. It's been mimeographed on machines and distributed to state houses all over the country. And many state houses are going, okay, let's see if we can make it even worse and up it. Okay, well, those fights are going on in every, uh, every way. But in some respect, do you, do you take some, some pride in the fact that you were one of the voices that coined Don't Say Gay? A year later, now in terms of the way you represented in Florida and represented for the LGBTQ community, uh, you coined a phrase. Uh, well, I would actually, I don't want to steal anyone's thunder. You know, um, John Harris Maurer, who is the public policy director for Equality Florida, originally coined the term, and we amplified it right away uh, because we knew that this, that this message cut through all the noise to really explain 
explain to people what the impact of this censorship bill was. It was a censorship bill about trying to push LGBTQ people into the closet to make them invisible in our public schools, whether they were LGBTQ teachers, parents, or students themselves. Republicans do not want us to be seen or heard. Don't say gay. Don't say trans. Uh, that was no, absolutely don't say black. the ethos. <laughs> yeah, don't say black. Don't say immigrant. Don't say gender studies. There, there is so much censorship that is front and center as part of the DeSantis agenda. But I'm very, I'm very disturbed to see how Florida continues to be the testing grounds for right-wing extremism. Yeah. Because that's, I think, the importance of what's happening here in Florida and why it's so important for not only Floridians, but people across the country to pay attention to what's happening here. Because what we see here, the, the, the passage of don't say LGBTQ here in Florida, some of these uh, extreme attacks on academic freedom and higher education, they are being exported to other parts of the country and replicated by other wannabe Trumps and wannabe DeSantis's, and that's a real yeah. problem. I, uh, um, uh, let's, let's talk about specific issues, but one last credit to you. Um, I was watching um, a German national television broadcast um, um, about three months ago, and they were reporting about what DeSantis and what was going on in Florida. And there was a video clip of you including, mm. uh, included in the national story. And you were, uh, you were at a rally and you were talking and, and the phrase, don't say gay, came out. And I thought as I watched that, it's in front of the NBC Nightly News of Germany. Sure. That it's one of the rare instances where the LGBTQ community has taken a page out of the Trump handbook and the DeSantis and Republican handbook of being able to coin something that elevates to the top. And in Germany, your voice was being repeated on Don't Say Gay. Do you feel, beyond, beyond the issues, do you feel some satisfaction? You know, at least we were doing our job in terms of making sure America, Florida, America, and the world was watching what was happening. In we Florida. were doing our job. We were lifting up this really, really, really important issue uh, and giving it the visibility that it needed for people to really understand what the consequences were going to be. And it and and it worked in the sense of our message was able to cut through. We were able to peel off uh, Republican. Uh, uh, opposition to this legislation. A lot of people don't realize that nine Republicans in the Florida uh, House and Senate voted against the Don't Say Gay bill. They are certainly paying the consequences for that now as far as retaliation from the DeSantis administration. But we did our job and we will continue to fight even if we uh, lose many battles in this process being outnumbered in Tallahassee. Well, there's our, our jumping off point in terms of the what's next. First, in, in relation to your voice, uh, everyone is going, um, we want to ensure that uh, Carlos Guillermo Smith uh, stays in the fight for LGBT Florida and issues. Uh, any big announcements you want to make today? Uh... I don't have any big announcements for you, <laughs> Al. I'm sorry to disappoint you, okay. but um, as I've, I've been uh, telling folks uh, who've been asking me ever since November of last year, what are my next steps? Look, right now, I'm uh, continuing to lean into my work at Equality Florida. I'm the special projects manager with the organization, uh, doing a lot of work related to making sure that people continue to understand uh, what's happening in the state of Florida, how uh, policies are making an impact on LGBTQ people's lives, but also uh, life after the Florida legislature, funny enough, doesn't really feel tremendously different for me. And I'm going to tell you why. I continue to get uh, requests for media interviews from local newspapers and local TV stations. I continue to be invited um, to spaces like these and other spaces in the communities where people want to hear my perspective. Uh, and that actually, it feels really good to, to just stay in the game in this way uh, because I'm going to continue to speak out. I'm going to continue to be involved. And the next steps, whatever those next steps are, uh, I think is going to be a step that includes me 
really a continuing to be a voice for the people and a voice for the community as I mean, well. I, I know there's thousands of LGBT community members and allies uh, that would want me to ask, do you expect that you'll come back to public life, that you'll run for uh, for an office again? You know, Al, it doesn't really feel like I'm in private life right now yeah. because I am, I am, maybe I do that to myself. I am so public in my advocacy. I am so public in my identity. Um, and and that, that, that really has been, it's become a way of life for, for my husband and I. So I don't know that that's going to change a lot. Okay. But uh, I know that I'm really, really eager to continue the fight yeah, to and get see the, what the next get steps will be. Right. I'll leave it at that Stay for out now. there. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll leave it at that. All right. Let's, let's talk about what we are watching. He has a super majority now. Yes. Uh, the legislative session is getting ready mm -hmm. to start. My gosh. I just shudder in terms of what we're getting ready it's uh, frightening. See, because it's just a rubber stamp. The House and the Senate is a rubber stamp for the governor. Let's talk about Governor DeSantis. He, he is king of the hill. He, uh, there's just no, no other alternative. From your perspective, what is next um, of what we should do in terms of trying to mitigate, uh, build a wall? whatever it might be for Governor DeSantis, what what should we be doing next? Well, I think folks need to continue uh, speaking out, uh, contacting their state representatives and their state senators uh, to oppose some of these bad bills when we're seeing them, some of these bad ideas. What Ron DeSantis has uh, successfully been able to do of late is he's using fear and intimidation to get what he wants without passing a single law. Let me give you an example. No new laws have passed, and yet the governor used his power and his uh, control of the Florida Board of Medicine and Board of Osteopathy to prohibit gender-affirming care for transgender youth and for adults who are on Medicaid and who are Medicaid recipients. No new laws were passed, and yet this prohibition has now effectively been enacted by his appointees through the process. It's not just LGBTQ issues. In late December, the governor demanded from state universities that they provide him uh, with detailed information about what they do related to diversity, equity, and inclusion programming. And then a couple weeks after that, Al, Every single one of our state college presidents, all 28 in Florida, sent a letter to the governor saying, we surrender. We agree with your agenda. We're going to ban diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives by February 1st without a single new law passing. They just capitulated. And it's fear? Yes, it's fear. It is certainly the power that the governor has that he has uh, demonstrated many times over that he's willing to use, to use his power in a punitive way to defund, let's just say, programming or institutions that have disobeyed him, to uh, punish businesses that have spoken out, Disney being the most famous, to use the regulatory authority he has, for example, here in Orlando, to stop venues from hosting drag performances. He's threatening to revoke yeah. the liquor license yeah. of the Plaza Live because they hosted a drag performance. Um, these are, these. he is wielding power in a way that is really frightening. Carlos, do you think, to the point that, and the examples that you just gave, that he's legislating without legislation? Um, that That's king-like in terms of uh, policy implementation. Do you think the LGBTQ community understands this degree of the threat and attack? I think we understand it more than most because what we've seen in the last couple of years is we have seen a governor and a legislature that appears to be obsessed with us. And by obsessed, I mean, we're talking about not only the Don't Say LGBTQ bill, we're talking about the bans on uh, gender affirming care, we're talking about the ban on trans students playing sports, we have legislation that is being filed to ban pride flags in all government buildings in Florida, we have of course the attacks against drag queens, and the list just goes on and on and on to make you wonder, wait, 
don't we actually have real issues in the state of Florida that need yeah. to be addressed? Housing affordability. Yeah, apparently climate is of no concern in South Florida. Healthcare, <laughs> climate. Like, are, these are important insurance. issues. Yeah. The, yeah. Property insurance that's, like, raising through the... These are important issues that need to be addressed. And they don't see the light of day because these culture wars and these attacks suck all of the air out Carlos, of the room. Uh, so you say that so clearly. Help us understand, help viewers understand why, if if it's illogical, why is he doing it? What's What's the goal? What's the end game here of what we're watching? Well, I think the reason he's doing so much of this is because he wants to win the Republican nomination for President of the United States. So much of what he's doing is based on chasing the Republican base in Iowa or New Hampshire or some state outside of Florida so that he can out-Trump Trump and he can win the nomination for president. And by the way, Al, he very well may win the nomination for president. Well, and I want to, I, I apologize to interrupt because I want, I want you to refine this point. The issue for Floridians and LGBT community, we have, you know, not to say that we, we support it because we, you know, the LGBT community doesn't, but we have two dogs in the hunt for the Republican nomination from Florida. This issue going on between Trump and DeSantis, help kind of forecast, what do you see is happening here? What Trump is doing, the, the new label name on, on uh, DeSantis, and and the process that's going on here to help forecast for us what we should be watching. Well, I want folks to make sure that they get out the popcorn <laughs> and get that ready for sure, because we're already starting to see these fireworks between Trump and DeSantis. They're battling it out, and we know that Trump is the king of all of these cheap shots and all of these insults, which we'll continue to see from him. But I think what's important to set the record straight on and to push back on is this idea that uh, DeSantis is a more moderate Trump. Oh no, he's not. He brings all of the same extreme Trump policies with him, but what he also brings with it is a competence and strategy in such a, it's with surgical precision, Al, that Ron DeSantis really knows what he's doing, which is what makes um, what makes this even more scary? How are you able to Floridians sell the concept that woke comes here to die when you're Harvard and Yale educated? How is that possible that he can be <laughs> successful of talking out of both sides of you his know, they, mouth? You know, they use these buzzwords, uh, and then actually recently, um, when a lawsuit was filed against the state to try to overturn, uh, and parts of it were overturned, the Stop Woke Act, DeSantis attorneys were required to explain to a judge what their definition of woke was. And their def definition of woke was not what they tell the public. Their definition of woke was something along the lines of, well, it's, a, it's an awareness that there are um, institutions that um, have historically um, m marginalized communities and discriminated and discriminated against communities as well, uh, and this idea that that somehow needs to change or be fixed. That I mean, it was a it was a like well slavery. <laughs> it was it was actually a well articulated definition yeah. of what woke really is. But it's not a bad thing. Yeah. But they, what, here's what they're doing now. One bill that was just recently filed that requires employers to uh, cover uh, detransition health care for trans people. They called it the reverse woke act. So now being trans is being woke, and that's bad, and we need to reverse it. Yeah. Some of these, some of these really dark, ugly messages yeah. are, are just so toxic. Protecting parental rights by taking parental rights away from the parents. Well, parental rights uh, is not something Republicans really care about, because yeah. if they did, they wouldn't be threatening to revoke the liquor licenses of businesses who dared to let parents decide for themselves what content was or yeah. was not appropriate yeah. for their own yeah. children. It's very clear, uh, the illustrations that you're giving. I'm curious in terms of what I hear. I'm not, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like you're more scared of DeSantis than what you know uh, you have in Trump. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. You know, I think DeSantis has the potential to uh, be 
so much more damaging as a leader of this country than Donald Trump was. Because again, he knows what he's doing. He has a very surgical precision at which he executes his strategy to not only disenfranchise people, but to target groups and turn them against one another. Let me, let me, let me, I want to give you an example of what I'm talking about. When Governor DeSantis faced the cameras and was asked about his opposition and his uh, cancellation of AP African American studies in Florida. And he was asked to explain why did he do this? Why did he ban this from being available in the state of Florida? And then he whipped around and he said, well, we looked through and we found that they were uh, including in the curriculum black queer studies. Who thinks that black queer studies should be a part of African American studies? Um, I don't know, any academic scholar, but you know what, you see what he just did there? He tried to blame the LGBTQ community uh, for his decision to abolish AP African American studies and turn the black and African American community against the LGBTQ community. But it didn't work out, yeah. and I think that that's a sign of things to come. You know, I want to ask uh, uh, specifically as it, it, as it relates uh, to this uh, attempt. A lot of the commenting that I'm hearing in LGBTQ community, especially here in Florida, mm -hmm. is that he may have currently won the battle in Florida, but that as he begins to export uh, DeSantis um, across the nation, and, sure. uh, that he won't have the same level of success in Florida. What What are your thoughts about that? Is well, he going to do well across the Look at America? what happened in 2022. Well, it was a disaster for Democrats, certainly in Florida. But around the country, Democrats did really well. They rejected Trumpism. They rejected DeSantis's style of politics in most every other state outside of ours. And so I think he's really going to have a challenge if he wins the presidential nomination, suddenly posturing himself as a centrist. Do centrists ban gender affirming care? Do centrists ban African American studies, AP studies in the state of Florida? Do centrists sign legislation that prohibits gender studies in higher education and only allows for students to pursue careers or minors and majors in the regime preferred field of study? The, this is not centrism, it's fascism, and people are waking up to that. Yeah. Um, final uh, related question about uh, uh, you participating in the Florida LGBT Democratic Caucus, uh, your voice and, and, and prompting up your voice of summarizing very clearly about what's going on in Florida. What is it that you want to see our community do? Uh, we're still licking our wounds. We're still trying to get over our grief of, of your uh, seat <laughs> in the House. Uh, what do we do next? What do you recommend we do? Well, of course, of course we want people to vote. That's the bare minimum. We want them to stay engaged, but what we also want them to do during this kind of dark, troubling time in Florida is we want them to center joy as a part of the struggle. Celebrate themselves, celebrate their lives, their authentic journeys to be who they are, because I think that that is a really, really important part of our struggle right now, is being reminded that we cannot go back to where we were before. We, you know, I'm happy to live openly LGBTQ with my husband, Jarek, here in Central Florida. So many trans people here in Florida are happy to live their lives openly and authentically if they have the privilege to be able to do that. We want to center and celebrate that joy as a part of this struggle that we're going through right now. Yeah. And are you optimistic that we will do that? Yeah, I have hope. I have hope not only because of what I've been seeing and what I've been hearing, but also because of elected officials right here in Central Florida who were successful on election night, people like Representative Anavi Eskamani or my member of Congress, Maxwell Frost, who is the uh, first Gen Z member of Congress at age 25. Amazing, they give me hope for the it? future. Yeah, they give the me future. hope. Yeah. Well, Carlos Guillermo Smith gives hope to our LGBT future here in Florida. Um, Carlos, you've, you've got to promise us uh, the moment that <laughs> you make a final decision of publicly saying, you know, this is exactly what I'm going to do 
do uh, next. You're going to turn to Queer News tonight so we can announce That's uh, right, Al. Announce you it. know it. Exactly. Thank you. Carlos Guillermo Smith here at the Florida LGBTQ Democratic Caucus. In, in 15 minutes, you <laughs> basically summarized our LGBT world. Very few people can do it as skillfully Thank you, uh, Al. as Carlos does. Keep watching.